Hey everyone, Fuseman coming at ya. Following up from last week's video, this is the Linux side for getting your render streaming game or app deployed at the cloud. Again, just like last time, we'll be specifically looking at AWS, but if you have other preferences for cloud providers, definitely let me know down in the comments below, or feel free to ask over on Discord, and I'm happy to put together a tutorial going over how you can actually get VR render streaming up and running in your preferred cloud or edge computing platform. As you'll quickly see as we go throughout this tutorial, one of the main reasons that you're gonna be looking at Linux, more, more specifically Ubuntu, for your render streaming applications is just solely due to pricing. If you can get it working on a GPU on Ubuntu, you're gonna be saving significantly in terms of costs, which is ultimately more money in your pocket, more money in your consumer's pocket when it comes to getting a scalable VR render streaming solution out there. So with that said, let's go ahead, switch over into desktop view and get started. Heading into the AWS console, you can actually see I have an instance up and running here. And quite frankly, it's because some of this installation takes a little bit of time, but that's why I have it set up for us. But if you're getting started, you'll first want to go ahead and launch an instance of Ubuntu with the NVIDIA gaming drivers integrated. So heading over to the marketplace, go ahead, type in NVIDIA, and then find the gaming PC for Ubuntu 18.04. Here, go ahead and collect that. You might need to get a request in for the actual image to be able to use it. That shouldn't take too long. Similarly to the window side of things, you might also need to request GPU access on AWS. Go ahead and just tell them that you're doing Cloud XR or Cloud VR, Cloud AR, and they'll likely get that approved for at least up to eight vCPUs, which is more than enough for our testing purposes. You can actually see here on the instance, it's significantly cheaper than the Windows version, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So let's go ahead, continue here, and we'll get all of the instances that are available. Go ahead, scroll down. You'll see that the G4DN is the one that we're gonna be using. So four CPUs and then one Tesla T4 that is integrated as part of the stack. The rest of this we can kind of skip through, but make sure you head over to your security group and for our specific purposes, we're actually going to be doing port 22 for SSH, which will be very important. And we'll want a UDP and TCP port on port 8443. And what this is, is going to be our remote desktop interface into the Linux machine. And this is what's gonna allow us to render our graphics, and then more importantly, have a display that we can use for WebRTC and VR render streaming so that the image is confident to actually use the graphics card, run the rendering workloads, and more importantly, stream that over to our web browser. So definitely make sure you include those, then go ahead, click review, and if you want to, go ahead and launch it. You'll need to set up a private key if you haven't done so already, and then you can go through and launch the instance. As I mentioned, I've already gone ahead and saved us that trouble by going ahead and pre-preparing an instance for us. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and cancel, otherwise you would click launch. So once your instance is up and running, and make sure the status has gone from initialized to passing the health checks, go ahead and click on that, and you can verify all of the settings down below here on the AWS panel. And more importantly, go to the connect option. This will tell you how you can actually connect to your instance. Specifically for us, we'll go ahead and copy in the example for our actual Linux deployment. And then you can go ahead and paste that into a terminal. So you can see here in my case, I've actually gone ahead and used git bash. So if I exit out of here, you can see I'm running git bash. I'm in the folder that I have for my downloads, and that is just so happens to be where my actual private key is. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste in the example SSH command that they have provided here. You can see that that is the command, and it connects using your private key, and you are now connected to the actual instance. First thing we'll need to do is actually set up a way to remote desktop in and setting up that Ubuntu desktop interface. 
For that, AWS has provided some guides on setting up a nice server, which allows you to do that remote desktop via our browser. So we're gonna be going through and walking through all of those steps to get that started. I kind of saved us a little bit of time by installing kind of the big chunk of things, but really it's just kind of a step-by-step -step process of following all of the instructions. So first thing you wanna do is go ahead and put the update in, which will just verify that everything is up to date and it might take a little less time. I just happen to have this after running the desktop, but then you'll wanna go ahead and install Ubuntu desktop, which is a several minute download and installation. So that's why I went ahead and did that for us in the beginning. And the rest of this is kind of lightweight. So the next thing you'll wanna do is install LightDM, which is your actual interface into Ubuntu desktop. So go ahead, click yes here. And then specifically, make sure you choose LightDM as your installation. The reason for that is actually that GDM3, which is below, is actually not really supported. So you actually have to go ahead and disable that if you use that. So LightDM is the preferred desktop management service that you'd want to use. Next, go ahead, click upgrade. So that'll do just some refreshes and make sure everything's up to date. And then finally, after this is done, we'll go ahead and reboot from there. Let's go ahead, click reboot. It will shut down your SSH because it's shutting down the whole virtual machine. And it should take only a few seconds really because it just needs to quickly refresh the instance because this happens to be a Linux server. But from there, most of the rest of this guide is actually just checking to make sure that you have all of the prerequisites that are already installed. Thanks to the fact that we used the NVIDIA gaming image, which has the correct drivers installed. So let me go ahead and now SSH back in. Speaking of NVIDIA, while we're at it, if you just want to check that NVIDIA is installed correctly, you can run the NVIDIA SMI command, which should tell you that there's a Tesla T4 and what drivers that you're using. So scrolling past this, because we have already chosen not to use GDM3. Next, we'll need to configure the X server and most of this is just verification here. So first thing we'll want to do is check what is our target for our specific graphics card. So you can see here we have the graphical target and that means that X server is already configured correctly, which is perfect for us. So we can actually go ahead and skip some of these steps and more specifically just verify that X server is up and running. You can see that we got this command here, which is pretty identical to the X server output that we would expect to see. Next, we're gonna be installing GLX utilities here. So make sure to copy in the command for 18.06 or 18.x. 18 and that should just be a very quick install. The other ones shouldn't work for your Linux distribution. This next step here for verifying OpenGL is actually not applicable because we're running on a GPU Linux server. So we don't have to worry about this. Otherwise, you would just need to install OpenGL for non-GPU instances. And then finally, we have to verify that we have the correct NVIDIA drivers installed and have them hooked up accordingly. Actually, in our case, we need to copy the second command because we're running a G4 instance. So let's go ahead and do that. That should set up the config file, which is perfect. Next, we'll just need to update our X server so that it takes into effect. Let's go ahead update the multi-user target, and then let's also update our graphical target. So copying and pasting both of those in. Finally, as a verification, let's just copy in their command for verifying that OpenGL is running on our NVIDIA graphics card. And if we see this in our command sheet, we're good to go. And that's it. So if you have AMD, you have another set of instructions, but in our case, we're just leveraging NVIDIA. Now we actually have to install the nice server since we got all the prereqs done. So again, just like last time, let's head into the Ubuntu 18.04 instructions. And we'll first want to go ahead and grab the nice server. So that's just a very quick download. And then let's go ahead and get the key associated with it that AWS provides for us. In our case, we're running 64-bit x86. So let's go ahead and get that specific version here of the nice server as well. And then we'll need to go ahead and unzip the file. That will get us a folder that includes our nice server all kind of set up to be installed. 
and we actually have to go ahead and do that installation. And the reason for this installation happening in this way, where you download the package as opposed to going directly to the package manager, is solely due to the fact that this is very specific to AWS. Once that has finished installing, we'll need to go ahead and set up a specific user for our nice server, which is just a very simple user mod file. And then the rest of this guide is really just simply optional stuff that we don't need to do. And at that point, we've pretty much gone ahead and set up the server. So next, we need to go ahead and start up the server. So for this, let's go ahead and just simply copy in that command here for starting the server. And that'll start up the server. But one of the caveats is that we don't have an authentication scheme that is actually used for getting into the server. So to do that, we need to actually configure it and specifically configure the, the authentication. There's a guide for that. Again, this will be linked down in the description below. Let's go to the configuration settings for Linux. And as you can see here, we specifically need to go to this dcv.config file. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is first CD myself over to etc dcv, and then I'm gonna run sudo vim dcv.conf. Now, what this will do is basically open up a text editor that allows me to update the configuration file. I'm gonna go searching for the authentication section. I'm gonna be searching for the security section here. And under security, I'm going to be typing in authentication equals none. Um, this is purely for testing purposes. Of course, if you wanna set up your own authentication, you can but I'm just gonna go ahead and save that as saying that I just wanna get access to my virtual machine straight up. And let's then go ahead and stop and start our actual server. So to, to make sure that the actual configuration is enabled. And once you have that, you can then go ahead and create a session. A session is basically the name for getting access to your Ubuntu uh, X server that is set up on that GPU. And of course, you can have multiple different sessions that are part of the server to allow various different people to interact. In our case, I'm just going to be using their default command for creating a session here. And more specifically, I've kind of tuned it down a little bit. So I'm just going to be copying and pasting the smaller version that is just creating the session. It's of type console for that user that we created earlier. It's a graphics session and it has a session name of my session. So let's go ahead and create that. And now we have a session without authentication that we can access our server on that port we set up earlier, which is 8,443. So all we need to do now is actually go back to our instance. It has a public IP address. So go ahead and copy that in and then put in colon port 443 and hit enter. And you might see this connection has reset. And the reason for that is you actually need to connect over HTTPS and it defaults to actually just doing HTTP. So we haven't set up a certificate, which is why you will see this error. That's fine. I'll go ahead and proceed. And that should get you into your Ubuntu instance. Now this might take a second that very first time that you actually set it up. And in fact, you might need to reboot your actual virtual machine to get this up and running if it doesn't connect to you right away. So. In our case, you can see it's taking a while. So let's actually just go back here and then put in sudo redo. You can see on the browser that has actually gone ahead and closed the instance because we basically shut down the whole machine. So give that a couple seconds to reboot itself. And once you're able to SSH back in, that's when you can go ahead, start up the server again, and then try entering into the virtual machine. So I'm gonna go ahead Start the server, Let's refresh this. You can see no sessions are available, which is good. I'm gonna go back to that create session command, enter that, and then let's refresh. And hopefully this time we're able to connect to that Ubuntu virtual machine. There we go. Now, one thing that we need to do actually here, now that we have access to that virtual machine is set up a password because we haven't even done that at all while we've had access to the machine. That's really easy to do. So head, heading back in here to our SSH key, let's go ahead, sudo password. And then for the Ubuntu user, we want to set up a password. I'm just gonna create a very dummy password here. And once I've done that, you can copy 
that password into your actual web browser to allow you to get instantiated with Ubuntu and have that running within the browser, which is already pretty cool in and of itself. Okay, so now we have Ubuntu as a desktop that we can connect to to start up our server, but there are a couple extra steps that we need to do. So first things first, let's go ahead, open up our file manager here, and then we'll want to open up a terminal. There are a couple more installation things we should need to do that are pretty minor. So for Unity, specifically for render streaming, which is built off of WebRTC, if we scroll down here, you'll notice that we need to install these two specific libraries that are part of WebRTC as prerequisites. These are needed in order to run WebRTC at the Linux level. So let's go ahead and make sure that those are included. The second thing we we'll want to do is install Vulkan. So we successfully installed OpenGL, which was included with our gaming drivers, but we haven't installed Vulkan. So for Unity, you actually need both of these OpenGL and Vulkan libraries installed in order to run the WebRTC render streaming application. So make sure you install that as well. Again, that'll be linked down in the description below as prerequisites that you need to install. And then finally, you need to actually get your actual game up into the server. You can see here, I have the VR render streaming sample for our archery game. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is head over to our build settings, since I have that set up, and go to Linux, and then make sure I'm using x86-64 as your target platforms. You might not have this option, and that means you haven't installed Linux as a build target for Unity. So you can go ahead and install that as a component within Unity Hub if you haven't done so already, which will then provide you this option. Then you can simply go ahead, build and run it, and then zip up all of those files that are necessary. You can see I actually have that here as a game file for Linux. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is exit out of my Ubuntu machine. And I'm going to go ahead and instead of the SSH command, I'm gonna be running the secure copy command, which is SCP. Again, we wanna pass the private key, but in our case, I'm actually going to put in the zip file as the location where we need to send the actual, uh, of our actual application. And I'm just gonna send this to the home directory of our Ubuntu image. This will take a couple seconds, obviously depending on the size of your game, but you can see here it's going through pretty quickly. And this will literally just copy over the network your zip file to Linux. Once that's wrapped up, let's go ahead, head back into the browser here. And you can now see we have that Linux data zip file. So now I'm just gonna go ahead, drag that into our downloads and then extract that. And we'll now have our Linux data source, which is great. This is our actual game. And let's go ahead and open the terminal in this folder. There's a couple minor things we want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and add the chmod to our actual Linux executable. What this is doing is just making that file an executable that we can actually run. And so now I can go ahead and run that as an executable, which will then pop us into our Unity WebRTC build. So this is running here in Oregon and now if I head back to fusevr.com slash rendering, and then let me go ahead, connect to the cloud VR render streaming. You can see here we have it. We have Linux streaming to my browser here. And if I want, we can go ahead and enter virtual reality mode on this device or a quest, you name it, right? So that is how we go ahead and set up the end-to-end -end stack for Linux to the browser. Hopefully you found this video helpful. I think Linux is absolutely critical as a platform for VR, especially when it comes to cloud streaming, as I've mentioned, just in terms of pricing, in terms of performance, I think that it really can't be beat. And I'm really excited to see how Linux will play a role in VR's future moving into, into the future. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And again, if you have questions, feel free to check us out over in Discord. Happy to help there. And otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next one. It's Confused Man, and I'm signing out.